Hey guys, this is the first video of topic 4 which covers subtopic 4.1 on miscibility and solutions. For today's video we're going to be looking at two learning objectives. Firstly we're going to learn how to identify solvents as either polar or nonpolar, and secondly understand how polarity of molecules can affect their solubility. This is a science understanding that uh, this relates to, so understanding the differences between polar and nonpolar solvents. To start off, we have to think about what these terms refer to, and in particular, we're looking at this property of solubility. We have seen this previously, um, introduced in subtopic 1.1, where I've defined it as the ability of a solute to dissolve in a solvent. The solute essentially is the substance that gets dissolved, and it's present in the lesser amount. The solvent is the substance that does the dissolving, and it's present in the greater amount. As an example here, we've got a solute, which is a, a solid substance, we're adding it to a liquid solvent, and the solid solute is essentially dissolving, and it becomes evenly dispersed within the solvent to form our solution itself. There are other examples of mixtures, but these are, I guess, some of the more common types of mixtures that we'll be dealing with. To be a little bit more detailed, solubility can be thought of in a quantitative way. So, more specifically, we can think of that as the amount of solute, and this can be in the form of mass or moles, that can dissolve in a given volume of solvent. This is going to be dependent on a number of things. The key one that we're going to focus on is molecular structure, but we also have temperature and pressure that have influences over solubility. The structure of a molecule affects its polarity, and what we already know is that the polarity of a molecule can affect strength of the intermolecular forces, that is, the forces that exist between the molecules. When we talk about solvents, we are going to focus just on liquid solvents, so things like water, and we know we can classify these solvents as polar and nonpolar. As a bit of revision, polar substances we say have an unsymmetrical distribution of charge, which essentially are the electrons. And what this means is that you end up establishing an N that is partially positive and an N that's partially negative. Nonpolar substances, however, have a symmetrical distribution of charge, so you can't establish these partially positive and negative Ns. We'll start off with some polar solvents. So water, which is probably the most common solvent. If we have a look here, so water is a polar solvent because we can see it's got this V shape where the oxygen N is partially negative and then the hydrogen N is partially positive. So that makes it a polar molecule and a polar solvent. For a, a small alcohol like methanol, uh, it also is a quite polar solvent. We have this polar OH bond here where the oxygen has a greater electronegativity compared to the hydrogen. So that forms a partially negative oxygen N, so to speak, and then a partially positive hydrogen N in the methanol molecule. On the other hand, we've got some nonpolar solvents here. So firstly, cyclohexane, which is something we've seen in the lab before, uh, C6H12. So we have six carbons joining in this cyclic structure, making it cyclohexane. Um, and it's only made up of carbons and hydrogens. So in other words, it's a hydrocarbon, and we know that these bonds themselves, the carbon to carbon and carbon to hydrogen bonds, are generally classified as nonpolar. So if there are only nonpolar bonds present in the molecule, that makes this entire molecule a nonpolar uh, molecule itself. Looking at the other two that I've given, um, so we've got pinene here, which is a common ingredient that we find in um, turpentine. And again, you can see that this is only a, a hydrocarbon, so it's only made up of carbons and hydrogens. The last one is octane, which is something that we commonly find in our uh, petrols. So it's the major ingredient in petrol or petroleum, and it's got a formula of C8H18. All of these are hydrocarbons, so essentially they're all nonpolar molecules, and therefore they're all nonpolar solvents. The next understanding is in regards to these polar and nonpolar solvents and how they don't readily mix. We need to be able to identify a solvent as polar or nonpolar based on how it interacts with water as well as other um, solvents like hydrocarbons. 
The word miscibility refers to the ability for liquids to mix to form a single liquid. And so firstly, it's important to understand that you can form liquid solutions when one liquid is dissolved in another. If we do have a miscible liquid, what it means is that it forms a single homogeneous liquid. That means it will form a single layer. There won't be any discernible differences between them. Whereas an immiscible liquid uh, would not mix with one another. In a miscible liquid, the solute and solvent particles have to form intermolecular forces that are as strong or if not stronger than the forces that exist between their own particles. Otherwise, there is no preference to actually form those interactions. And as a result, they won't interact with one another and therefore uh, they won't mix. An example of a miscible liquid with water is ethanol. We know ethanol is an alcohol. Ethanol molecules have a polar OH group or a polar hydroxyl group. So we know that this is capable of forming quite strong interactions with water. And in actual fact, this can form strong hydrogen bonding with water. So in order for water to dissolve ethanol, the water molecules will have to disrupt some of these forces between ethanol molecules. Ethanol molecules will also have dispersion forces, but keeping in mind that the new forces that form between the water and ethanol will also be uh, quite strong hydrogen bonding, as well as some dispersion forces between water and the non-polar parts of ethanol. An example of some immiscible liquids would be things like water and oil, and we'll be quite familiar with this, especially at home, uh, if we are trying to wash some pots and pans. And we'll see that the oil seems to stick onto our uh, pots and pans, and water doesn't really do a good job with removing it. And that's because if we have a look here, oil itself, uh, it's only made up of carbons and hydrogens mostly. And so this is going to be a very non-polar molecule. Water being a polar molecule, it makes it difficult for water to form uh, sufficient forces to surround these oil molecules. And one thing that you'll probably hear is this like dissolves like principle. It doesn't actually explain why water and oil don't mix, but it gives you a general principle to understand how polar and non-polar sub, uh, substances can interact. Water being a polar substance, oil being non-polar, so like dissolves like, and in this case, we have two things that are unlike one another. We can see this image of a test tube that contains three different liquids. We've got hexane at the top, water in the middle, and then carbon tetrachloride on the bottom. And they separate because of differences in density. Now when we look at the ability for hexane and CCL4 to mix with water, we would say that they would form immiscible layers. And why would that be the case? Well, what we know already is that water is a polar substance. It's a polar solvent. If it doesn't seem to mix with hexane and CCL4, that would then suggest that these two have different polarities. So hexane itself, which can be used as a solvent, it would be classified as a non-polar solvent, and CCL4 is also a non-polar solvent. We may spend some time in class just to talk about why that's the case. This just reiterates that point, uh, in particular with hexane and water, and why they don't actually mix. What we have to keep in mind is that there are forces between the hexane molecules. So we have these London or dispersion forces, which can be quite strong with big molecules. Water has strong hydrogen bonding. And in order for water to uh, dissolve this hexane, it would have to break some of those strong dispersion forces and replace it with perhaps weaker dispersion forces and there's not really a, a high preference to want to do that, so therefore they don't tend to mix with one another. The next science understanding, uh, highly polar molecular substances are more soluble in water than non-polar molecules of a similar size. What I'm going to do is just run through a few examples where we'll compare some molecules of similar size and be able to uh, perhaps suggest or infer uh, why that's the case. So here we've got three different uh, gases. We've got uh, methane, hydrogen fluoride, and ammonia. We can start off and look at their molecular formula. Uh, 
Another thing that we can also compare is their size. And in particular, we're talking about mass. So if we were to find the molar masses of these compounds, um, you can see that they are all quite similar. But the quite interesting thing is when we look at its solubility in water. And instead of just looking at whether it is soluble or not, we often look at the amount of it that's soluble in a given volume. So in this case, uh, the number of grams of our uh, substance that can dissolve per 100 mils of water. So we can see methane has a solubility of 0 0.00227 grams per 100 mils, which isn't um, very much. The next best is ammonia, which is at 31 grams per 100 mil. And what's quite interesting is that hydrogen fluoride is completely miscible. That means we can add as much of this hydrogen fluoride as possible and it will completely dissolve in water. What this would then suggest is the nature of the polarity of these molecules. Because water is a polar solvent, it means that it will help dissolve polar solutes. Uh, in the case of methane, because it, it isn't very soluble, it would suggest that methane is a nonpolar substance. And we already know that to be true. Have a look at hydrogen fluoride. It is completely miscible. So that would suggest that hydrogen fluoride is a polar molecule. And ammonia also with quite a decent solubility, um, we could also suggest is another polar molecule.